Oh, hi there. I'm back again, and I just wanted to let you know something. Santa's hiring. He needs helpers. But if you want to be a Santa's helper, you have to have the special Santa helper hat. You know, like this one, the one that I'm wearing on my head, this exact hat. See? You like it? Well, if you want to be Santa's helper and you want to make this hat for yourself, stay tuned and I'll get you started. So now we're going to find the center of our thing here. That's the outside. And it's such a lovely day when you can find the center. It's not such a good day when you don't find it and you make a big pile of yarn all in a knot. But when you can find it, it's great. And this was my lucky day. So, what I do, I take that little tail that I have here, and I tie this yarn onto it as close to the loom as I can. So, just work with it a little bit till you get it. Okay, so I'm going to make a row of knits, and what you can do is make a slip knot right here, or you can just do a simple knot right here. And that's just to secure it until you get around the loom. Having a little hard time here. Bear with me. Okay, secure that there. Okay, once you get this on, it, it it's easier. So I'm just gonna do it one peg at a time right now, so I make sure that's nice and secure. It's one, and I don't really necessarily count this as a row okay so I feel confident that I can take this off now and then we will weave all of this in later and another thing you know push all these down so you have room to work how you hold your pick I don't know you may be a novice at this some people will go underneath and knit over. Some people will go over and pull it over like so. So however you're comfortable, I kind of shift it back and forth just because, you know, my hand gets tired of holding it a certain way. Okay, now I can do a few at a time. And so I'll do some that way. If I get tired of doing that, I'll do it this way. This is the way I learned. Just going underneath and over. But I've seen other uh, YouTubers that do tutorials do it both ways. Well, they do it one way. Another one will do it one way. But this is your project. You do what's comfortable for you. Okay. So you're knitting over the white thread yarn over the red. 
and that's just blending that in right there. Now you don't have to add the green stripe. I'm kind of undecided if I'm going to do that or not. But I think it adds just a little character that most um, Santa inspired hats do not have. My husband likes it. One of his friends liked it. So I made a hat for him like that. And we're going to do a couple of um, a variation on the stitch. We're not just doing the E-wrap. E-wrap is fine, but don't get in a habit of just doing E-wrap. There are so many other stitches. Um, this one does curl a lot on the ends. And if you do one, there are different stitches, and we'll go over that later. You know, there's a U-wrap and just different ones. Okay, so we've got all that attached. So I'm going to do one more row of knits, and I'll meet you back when I get around. So I'm just going to do one more row of E-wrap knits. Oh, let me show you something else that, you know, I said I do a little bit at a time. If you want to knit it all, this is what I suggest you do. So I'm going to do that one this way. I'm going to go all the way around the loom. You know, like so. Push those down. There we in a minute. So I want you to find what works best for you, what's going to make this project enjoyable. Because to me, if you find it tedious or hard or not enjoyable, then it's, it's you know, why do it, uh, is what I think. Whoa, okay. <laughs> That's what you got to be careful of when you do knit wrap all the way around. Okay, so I've got my last one wrapped. So what I'm going to do, that anchor peg, I'm going to go around it. And I'm going to do a little figure eight about two times. And that will hold it in place while I knit this row off. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to knit everything off. And then I will meet you back when I get to the very beginning. So I'm down to my last two pegs. So I'm going to knit that one off and I did that figure eight. I'm going to remove the figure eight. That secured that on there and knit that last one off. So however you feel most confident is what you need to do. So we're going to get this little tail out of the way for now. So we don't accidentally do something we don't want to do with it. So now we're going to do a purl. So it's going to give it that bumpy edge like the garter stitch that I did on this one. So, to do a purl, you cannot pre-wrap on these. So you're gonna take your yarn, place it under that stitch, you're gonna go under that stitch, you're gonna pull that yarn out, pull up a loop, you're gonna take it off the peg Place that loop back on and tighten up. We're going to do this all the way around the loom. Go under that loop. Scoop it up another loop. Take it off the peg. Place that loop on the peg and tighten. Again, go under. Scoop up. Take it off the peg. Put that loop on the peg and tighten. Can you see that? Under. Scoop up. 
take off, put back on. You do it a couple more times, and then I'll let you have it till we get back around. Scoop up, take off, put on, tighten up. One more time. Go under, scoop up, take it off the peg, put the loop on the peg. So do that all the way around, and I will meet you back. Okay, I'm down to my last two pegs, so I'm going to purl two more times. And you will get faster the more you do this. And honestly, if you wanted to knit a whole hat, that's fine. But, I, you know, the purl stitch can be fun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to knit two more rows, and then we're going to purl another row. So, I want you to knit all the way around for two times, and then you're going to purl for the third time. So, let's do that. We're going to wrap like that, or however you prefer to do it. And I'm just going to knit two rows, and then I'm going to do another purl, and then I will come back and we'll do a color change. To the green. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm down to my last three pearls. Let me just get those done and then we're going to color change. Now color changing is an option. You don't have to color change. You can keep it the same color the whole entire hat. Okay, that's my last pearl. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this one, since it's up high, is I think I'm going to just make a slip knot. So I got it, the green, I have to use two strands as one because it's a worsted weight. I did not have a chunky weight um, yarn to use. All right, so I made a slip knot, and I'm just going to put it on that first peg that we started with. I'm going to tighten that up, and then I'm just going to knit this first row. Oh, let me show you how I keep track of the knit and purl. So I just wrote down KKP for knit, knit, purl, and then um, I didn't mark that tally. So I marked it for the first row, and I marked it for the second row. Okay, so that red row's done, so I'm going to mark that out. We're doing our green, but we're just casting on the green right now. Okay, so I've got that on, that first anchor peg, and then I'm going to knit the red over that one. Now, what we can do, we can cut this red one off and tie this green on to the red. And some people don't like to put extra knots in their work. I'd rather it be a little secure. The knots don't bother me. Okay, so get that out of the way and we're gonna weave everything in later. Okay, so we've got that one done. So we're just gonna knit this entire row to get that green cast on. Then we're going to do that same sequence that we did uh, with the knit, knit, purl, knit, knit, purl. So let's get this row cast um, on and then we'll start that sequence. But I took some of that yarn out of the skein and rolled it into a ball so it'd be easier to use two strands. If you have, if you're using worsted weight, you can get two skeins and just pull it from two different skeins. Or you can buy a chunky. 
I'm just going with the supplies that I have on hand. You know, I bought a couple of rows of this. Um, it's furry kind of. That's why I liked it. You know, a couple of years ago. And I found it in my stash when I was trying to organize my yarn. I go, oh, I need to make another Santa hat. So, that's why I'm doing this one. And I had the chunky red. And I had the... I didn't have any of the chunky green that I use on my husband's hat. So, that's why I'm using this worsted weight. Using two strands instead. And I'm getting a little knotty here, right here. There, that came out right easily. Get that on. Now, if you use um, a loom that has a smaller gauge, you can use that worsted weight yarn with one strand. Um, there's a brand you can buy at Walmart and the Boy brand. I'm not a fan. I mean, if you like it, you can. It has hooks at the top, and to me, that kind of snags my yarn. I don't like it. But that's not to say that you wouldn't like it. So by all means, you know, if you try it, you may love the Boyd looms. And that's perfectly fine. They're just not for me. So that's all I'm saying about that. Okay, I've almost got all this cast on. Got two more. Get that out of the way. Okay, so we've got our new color. And I just want to do a stripe, and then I may do another stripe later. But see how that's turning out? You have that? Okay, so now we're going to do our next um, knit, knit, purl sequence. And we're going to do that two times. So we're going to knit a row, knit another row, purl a row, and then go back. Knit a row, knit a row, purl a row, and then we're going to switch back to our red. So I'm going to get that done, and then I will meet you back in a moment. Okay. Okay, I'm getting close to the end of my last purl on my green, and then we're going to color change, and then we're going to make a big block in the red. We want the hat to measure about 10 inches from the bottom of the brim to the top of the hat. So you just kind of gauge that as you're doing rows. I'm only going to do one more thin row of green after I do a big patch of the red. Okay, so I got two more pearls I need to do and then we're going to color change back to the red. Here's my last purl. Hopefully you got the hang of the knit stitch and the purl stitch. And they do make different, the purl makes that curly stitch right there. Okay, so now we're going to cut this. And we're going to attach our red again. Excuse me. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to make a slip knot. We're going to do it like we did the green earlier. To make a slip knot, I take two fingers, I wrap the yarn around, and I put the yarn between my two fingers. Yeah, like that. Wrap it around. Take your fingers, grab it, pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to put it not on the anchor peg, but on the first peg. Tighten that up, and then you can tie these together to secure it. But you're going to weave all these tails in, and I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that uh, you do need a yarn needle. They come in plastic. A lot of the looms will come with a plastic hook 
You can see that. I prefer metal, but either one will work. It just has a big eye and a blunt tip, so either one. But I like the metal one best, but you can use what you have or what you prefer. This one does have a bit um, in, but they have straight ones too, but either one is fine. So this is the pattern guide that I'm using. Okay, so I did the KKP for Knit Knit Pearl. So I did red, and I was doing two rows of that. You see that? And then I did green. I just finished that pearl row. So I did two uh, sequences of that. So next, I'm going to do two doing that sequence four times. So I've got red, red, so I'm going to do the sequence four times. So a knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl. And then I'm going to do another color change for green. And I'm going to do the knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl. And then I'm going to switch back to the red and I'm going to complete my hat with the red. So that's just kind of a guide. That's how I'm used to doing it. But you can do it however it helps you. So, so we started our color change. So now we're going to knit the green over the red. And we're going to do that all the way around. And I think I'll keep you on for this one. So we're knitting all the way around. And I've noticed a mistake down here in my brim that we're going to fix when we're closing the hat up. So we're knitting the green over the red. So we want to get this hat 10 inches tall from the brim to the top and then I'm going to show you how to uh, close it off. So let's get this knitted all the way around. I just want to show you so I, uh, you're sure of what I'm talking about to make sure you're doing it correctly. Now you don't have to follow this pattern exactly. But see how it's making like a curly line and a knitted line? So that's why I'm alternating the knits and the pearls. But I want the two um, knits in between. Now if you didn't do the two knits, you just did a pearl and a knit, pearl and a knit, it would look like this the whole time. So it's just whatever you like whatever you think is pretty. You can combine some stitches. Like I said, the one that I wear is a um, spiral knit. And I can show you that. But you don't have to make these in Christmas colors. You can make them in your favorite colors. Alright, so I'm getting around here. Like so. Now normally if I'm not trying to show somebody how to do this, this would be in my lap. And I would be sitting down in front of the TV watching a movie, probably a movie that I've already seen. So, you know, I'm not distracted too much. So there, we've got that. On. So now we're going to do our sequence of knit, knit, purl, knit, knit, purl. And we're going to repeat that four times. So let me show you again if you want to wrap the whole loom. I did that a while ago and I noticed I missed a peg. So I had to unwrap the rest of the peg so I could wrap that one that I missed. It happens. Uh, some mistakes are easier fixed than others. You know, make sure you push those down to make room. And I also want to add that normally I try 
to use the same you know type of yarn within a project but I was trying to use what I had on hand it may not always work to use a different but some yarns work pretty good together like I'm using a worsted weight that I had to double up and so far I think it's gonna work I mean, you can't really tell much of a difference. So let me keep going around here. Let me show you what I'm going to do. And then if you find that you missed one, you may have to unravel what you haven't done yet to fix it. Okay, so I'm wrapping that last peg. And that's the E-Route. Remember I said it's the E-Route because it looks like a cursive E. A little cursive E. So I'm figure eighting around twice so it'll be snug and held on there. And so that will hold it on there till I get back to the beginning. Okay, so then we're going to knit off. See, the drawback is it makes that stitch a little tighter and it may be difficult to knit off. But once you get that one knit off, see, so when you do that, you can just breeze right through and knit them off. So there's advantages and disadvantages of each. You have to figure out which one has the advantage that you desire. If that makes sense. Please, if you have any questions about this project or, you know, or the stitches or whatever, please comment below. I will do my best to answer. Believe me, I am not in any way a professional. I'm just trying to inspire you to be creative and to make your own project. I promise if you try this and you construct a hat, your very first hat, you will be so proud of that hat. It will make you happy. And it may not be perfect, but you keep doing it. And you'll learn new um, techniques along the way. And your next hat will look better. And then the next hat will look better. Okay, so I've got that one done. So I'm going to mark the little pattern grid I have here. So I did one knit. So I'm going to do another knit. So I'm going to push these down so it's easier. I didn't skip any pegs. Sorry if I keep getting off the view of the camera. Hopefully, as time goes by, I'll get better at filming these. Okay, so we're going to do another row of knits. So I am going to wrap all the pegs so I can show you that technique that I did. What are some things that you would like to learn to do? I crochet as well. I love to crochet. I actually, I picked up crochet before I did a loom. And um, I used to think loom knitting was cheating, but it's not. It's a tool. It's a different tool that you use. Like if you're mixing up a batch of cookies, if you use a mixer, versus your hand and a spoon, you're not cheating. You're using a different tool to mix up, you know, your cake batter or your cookie dough or whatever. It's a tool that gets you to the same result. Okay, I wrapped that last one. So around my anchor peg, back around, anchor peg, back around. A little figure eight two times. And that will secure it until you can get it back around there. And then it doesn't leave the gap that I was uh, talking about. So, sorry if I keep getting out of frame. I do apologize. So, how many um, Avid Loom Knitters do I have on here? You know, how many... Um, of you crochet and loom knit. 
How many of you use um, knitting needles? Now I can, I have made a scarf with needles, just a basic garter stitch scarf. It turned out it was pretty. It took me a lot longer than it would on the loom. But if you've been doing it for a very long time, you may think this is a little more difficult than the needles. Um, but we're making the same stitches. This is just a different tool. Knitting needles is a tool. And there is a debate, and I don't think it's really been um, resolved, of which came first, the needle or the loom. Some people think the loom came first because it dates back a long time ago. They found where they were making socks on a loom. So I don't know. What do you think came first? Has anybody done uh, some research and really know the facts about that? I don't think anybody really knows. All right. So I've got that one knitted. So I'm going to tally that. So my next one under the P is going to be a purl. Okay, so remember how we purl. I'm not going to push these down because I need to go underneath. All right, so we go put the yarn under that top loop. You're going to take your pick, go down, scoop up another loop. You're going to take that loop off of the peg, put it, put that loop back on the peg and tighten. So you're going to go under, scoop up a loop, take that one off, and put that loop back on. I hope my hand's not in the way and you can see that. Go under, scoop up the loop. Take it off and tighten. If you need to use your pick to assist you in that, that's perfectly fine. If you can get it off with your fingers, that's fine too. And put it back. So we're just going to do that all the way around till we get back to the anchor peg. And you will get faster the more you do it. I haven't really knitted a hat in a long time. Uh, I have knit, I uh, have crocheted a hat most recently. But I have not loom knitted a hat. And I have a sun hat that I promised to make for somebody. One of my friends. And I crochet that. So it wasn't my pattern. I do it a little bit different. So I may show you how I do it. But just so you know, um, it's not my pattern. I mean, there's it's kind of hard to claim a pattern. The different, you know, doing my knit knit pearl is something I made up. But the basic stitches, you know, are the same. You know, there's knits and there's pearls. There's different ways to knit. You know, tonight we're doing the um, E-Wrap, which is the uh, lowercase cursive E. And that's why it's called that. If you were making an E in cursive, you would, you know, circle it around. But then there's the U-Knit, uh, the U-Wrap. Uh, there's the half wrap, but I'll make a video later, later of the different ways to make a knit stitch. Okay, so we got to finish purling this row right here. And I sure hope I'm staying in the frame of the camera. I think I may have varied off a little earlier, and I do apologize for that. This is very new to me, filming a tutorial. You know, when I'm cooking, I'm right in front of the camera, and... So, 
So I hope I'm helping you learn something. But more than that, I want to, I really want to help you to search for that creativity within you. Everybody has something. You know, whether it's um maybe you're good at picking out outfits. You have a gift, you know, pairing up shirts with skirts, matching shoes, uh, selecting jewelry that matches an outfit that, you know, maybe you have a gift to do that. You know, that's being creative. You are being creative, you know, matching shoes and with an outfit, matching accessories with an outfit. You know, what jacket should I wear? You know, that is a creative talent that you have. So don't dismiss things and say you're not creative. You are. You just have to find it. Can you cook a meal? Okay, that's being creative, cooking a meal. You know, um, can you paint? I wish I could. I mean, I can paint like furniture or, you know, a wall. But I'm talking about painting a you know, a picture. That's not my skill set. I've seen some people very, very talented in that. That is definitely a creation. Um, it's just all sorts of ways to be creative. Do you write poems? Can you write little stories? That's creative, and that's an art. Um, <clears throat> you know, you went and picked out your furniture for your home. That takes a little um, bit of creativity. So don't discount things. You know, you have a lot of creativity within you. You know, you were made in God's image, and he is the master creator. So you have some of that creative, creative uh, gene passed down to you. So I hope I inspire you to tap into that. Try something new. You know, you may try it, it doesn't turn out, but you enjoyed doing it. Your time was not wasted. You enjoyed doing something. You may try something and discover that you love doing it, and you want to keep doing it until you can make something better and better and better each time you do it. You know, you're going to make mistakes, but the more you do it, the less you're going to make mistakes. So, I hope I inspire you to tap into that and find ways that you can be creative. You know, I don't know how people, you know, get through, you know, their day every day. If they're not doing something creative. It keeps your mind sharper. It brings pleasure to life. It does to me anyway. And it can also bring, you know, pleasure for other people. You know, you cook them a meal, you bake them a cake, you make them a batch of cookies. You know, you're uh, blessing others with your creative talent. So, you know, think about it. Just tap down in into that. What can I do that's creative? Okay, I'm doing my last pearl right here. Comment below some of the things that, you know, you do that is creative. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so we've done our last pearl here. So I'm going to mark my pattern grid. I'm going to do that one in the red 
one more time. Well, I'm going to do it three more times. And then um, I'll come back after I do it three more times. So a total of four times. Knit, knit, purl, knit, knit, purl, knit, knit, purl, knit, knit, purl in the red. Uh, and I will do that. After I've done that, I will meet you back. And we'll see how tall our hat is at that point to see how much further we need to go. I would like to add another green stripe to it. But if it's tall enough, I may not do that. Uh, and if it looks like it's getting tall enough when I get to that third round of Knit Knit Pearl, I may stop there, but I will come back when I get around there. Remember, we want the hat to be 10 inches from the rim to the top. So let me do this sequence another three or four more, um, a total of three or a total of four, and then we'll see how tall it is to see if we want to do it again or, or we're ready to change to a, a green stripe so we'll be back after i do this one okay i'm down to my last three pearls on this row and i'll tell you what i just finished pearl pearl and the last pearl So I'm going to mark my tally for my last pearl. So I did two of these right here. I did a knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, another knit, knit, pearl, and one more knit, knit, pearl. Now we're going to color change to green, and we're going to do a knit, knit, pearl, knit, knit, pearl. So we're going to snip this yarn. And we're going to add our green. So I've got the two, since this is worsted weight again, I've got the two strands of worsted weight. And then you cross it over like so. I put that between my fingers. And then I pull it through the loop. And that's how I make a slip knot. However you know how, if you already know how, you do it that way. And so for the color change, I'm placing it on that first peg and tightening it up. Okay, so we're doing a knit, knit, purl. Knit, knit, purl. So that first one, I'm going to knit over. So I'm going to go all the way around the loom with my double strands, and we're going to knit. Doing a few at a time. Sorry if I keep getting this out of the camera view. I do apologize. And I hope you can see what I'm doing and understand clearly. I will post the graph that I made. Or I'll try to. I don't know if I can do it that way. But I'll try to write out what I did. This graph is just my way of keeping track of what I've done and what I need to do next. Make sure you have a lot enough loose yarn so it's not pulling tension that you un, tension that you don't want. Knit over. Over. I love the Christmas colors. It's so pretty. Green represents the evergreen. I have to do a little research and see exactly what, if there's a meaning to the different red and green. If you know, please feel free to comment below. But I'll do a little research and maybe come back and talk about it. So I'm hoping I'm posting this hat in time for you to make one if you want to make one 
for yourself to wear for Christmas. Or if you want to do a different color and give it as a gift. <clears throat> that would be a very thoughtful gift. Okay, we're down to our last three knits. So I'm going to wrap those three and knit it off. You want to hold that one really tight. So it doesn't go over loosely the last um, strand of red. So hold the tail there when you knit it off. There. All right, so we've done a knit. So I'm going to mark my sheet right here. I need to do another knit and then a purl. So I think I will wrap the whole thing around just to see if it's any faster. You know, push down the ones that you just knitted. I do hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and thinking about the reason we do celebrate. Okay, so I'm wrapping all the way around. It's probably easier to push these down before you get started, but you can also push them down as you go, as I am doing. Start right there and push these down. There. Ah! Oh my goodness, you see what just happened? I've got to start over now. Alright, so since I gotta start over, that oh my own dummy. I'm gonna make sure these are all pushed down. Now I can do it again. So it's very important to hold down on it. That's another reason you might want to consider. Uh, knitting a few at a time versus wrapping the whole peg. Just make sure if you wrap the whole peg that you are holding on and you're not going to let go. So wrap. Wrap. Would you wear this as part of a Santa outfit? I think it'd be cute, especially if you had some green mittens. And some green, you know, in the suit somewhere. I think it would be very cute. Okay, so I wrapped that last peg. So I'm going to do my figure eight around the anchor peg in that last one. I'm going to do it twice so it doesn't come off. And so there, I've got it there. So now, all we got to do is knit off the whole peg. Now, you can only use the E-wrap to wrap the whole peg. There's not another wrap to wrap the whole peg you know, other than the E-wrap, because you're wrapping it all the way around. The, you know, the U-knit, the half-knit, you're not wrapping all the way around, so there's, it's not possible to wrap the peg. When you're purling, you cannot do anything, you know, ahead of time around. You have to do it one at a time. So kind of, you know, play with it, get used to doing, you know, different methods. You know, see what works best for you. But if you're using the E-wrap, you can wrap the whole peg. And I don't like the E-wrap on every thing I make. It does curl. So sometimes using uh, the knit stitch, the U-wrap, or half wrapping, works better. And in those cases, you cannot wrap the loom all the way around. You just can't do it because it, it 
It's a connectivity, you know, like the cursive E. It connects. So I believe that's why it's called the E wrap. All right, almost back to the beginning. Got one. If you skip one, go to the next one. You'll notice that it's uh, very tight and hard to pull over. But go back and knit the one you miss, and it becomes easy. Okay, that one, and then we're down to our last one. So I need to unwrap my figure eight and knit off of that last one. And then I'm going to mark my graph. I uh, did a knit. I already did the knit. I didn't mark. Oh, that's my knit. I'm sorry. I'm now going to do my purl stitch. So I've done my knit knit. If you see right here, knit knit purl. I've done my knit knit. So now I'm going to do my purl. Now I'm not going to push them down for the purl because I need to go at the top and pull from underneath. Okay, so this you cannot pre prep anything around the, the loom. Okay, so I'm going to go through the top, scoop up a loop with that new yarn, take that off of the peg, and put the new loop on. Okay, I hope you can see that. So I go under the loop that's on the peg, scoop up the strand of yarn that's under it, Sometimes if you grab the yarn, you're not grabbing the loop. Okay, so I go under, scoop that up, you create a new loop, pull the loop off that's on the peg, put the new loop on the peg, and pull the tighten. That's your purl stitch on a loom. So go under, pull up a loop, take the existing loop off of the peg, put the new loop, on the peg and pull the tighten. That can get a little confusing if you're using two strands of yarn. So if you are a beginning, if you are a beginner at loom knitting, I would suggest you start with a bulky weight yarn so you do not have to double knit unless you're using um, a smaller gauge loom. They do make them. Um, there's some looms now they're called the flexi looms, and you can make them any size you want. They do have the small ones, the small gauge, and they have the large gauge. And you can connect them together uh, to make a round loom for a hat or straight or for a blanket or a scarf or whatever you need for a shawl or... Or a sweater there's all sorts of things that you can make if you can make it with knitting needles you can make it on a loom I am by no means a professional at any of this I've never made a garment such as a sweater I've only made scarves and hats and I've made household uh, goods I've made um, The uh, plastic bag holders, which are pretty fun to make. I've made dishcloths, dish scrubbies. I usually crochet my dishcloths and I loom knit the scrubbies. That, and if you're doing anything, you know, as far as washing dishes or anything like that, or even a face cloth, use cotton that you're going to be, you know, getting wet all the time so use cotton for that for most things a hundred percent acrylic is good um, if you're gifting or giving to charity you do want to be careful with some of the natural fibers like the yarn I use to make the brim and the pom-pom it does have wool in it, and you wouldn't want to give that to someone that's allergic to wool. So if you're giving it to a charity such as a homeless shelter or um, for people that need uh, that are going through chemo and they need hats to keep their head warm, 
I would talk to the place that you're uh, donating it to. If you're donating it to an uh, individual, just find out if they do have any allergies because you do not want to give them something that's going to cause them grief. So if they're allergic to wool, you don't want to use wool in your projects that you're going to give them. So I would say acrylic is safe as far as allergies. But again, if you're giving to a shelter or a hospital or a place that um, for cancer treatments, call the place before you uh, make your projects to donate and find out exactly what they need. You know, of course, uh, you need to know if someone's allergic to wool or, you know, rabbit fur or whatever before you make it as a gift. Or if you're making it to sell somebody. You want to make sure there's no allergies to any of the natural fibers. But yes, again, you'll be safe using 100% acrylic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this row of pearls and then I'm going to repeat that same uh, pattern of knit a row, knit a row, and purl a row. And when I finish that purl, I'll come back and I'll show you the color change uh, to the red and then we will continue with the red. Um, this is the last green we're going to use. So we'll get the red and then we'll finish the hat. So let me finish this pearl and do another sequence. And then I'll be right back to uh, color change to the red. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm down to my last three pearls, pearl stitches on this one. Go under the loop on the peg, scoop up a new loop, take that one off of the peg, put the new loop on the peg, pull and tighten, and one more time. Go under the loop existing on the peg, with the new yarn, pull up a new loop. Take it off of the peg and put the new loop back on the peg and tighten. So that completes my knit knit pearl for the green yarn. Okay, I believe this is plenty tall enough. So let me just get the measuring tape out here. here and yeah it may be a little longer than I anticipated so what I'm going to do you do want to end it with a knit so I'm going to do one more color change so we're going to cut this off and we're going to pick up our red yarn and we're going to end with the red all right, so we're doing a slip knot, and this is how I do it. I hold it right here with my two fingers. I cross it around my fingers in an X right here. I put the strand of yarn between my two fingers. I pull the tail a little bit and pull it through that loop. And there's my slip knot. Then I put the slip knot on the first peg. And now we're ready to knit that first peg off. Knit off. Okay. Something, you know, I could have been doing all along. So we, all these tails we're going to have to weave in. What we could do here. Okay, we have our working yarn right here. And we have the tail that we cut off on the um, green. OK, 
Okay, when we get back around, let me see. Actually, we're just going to weave this one in. So when I go here, see this short tail here of the red? I will have to go in and weave my green in. But this red right here, I'm going to put it together with my working yarn. Now this is going to make it a little tight. But then you don't have to worry about weaving that part in. Because you'll already have it done. And, you know, you only have a short little tail, so it's not going to take long. There's probably just two knits right here. And we're done. And then we, you can cut that little piece of tab off because that's already knitted in and it will be hidden in the hat. So now we'll continue with our working yarn. Like I said, get enough out where it's not causing too much tension. So we're going to wrap a few and knit a few. And we are almost done with this hat. So wrap, 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 knit, 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 wrap, 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 knit, knit. Knit. Now there are smaller looms if you want to make this for a child. I would say this is for an adult male or a woman with a lot of hair, you know, that needs the, she needs room. This is normally what I would use for a woman's size. And then I don't have them handy here, but I, there's one smaller than this that might work for a uh, younger child. An older child or a teen, this will probably work. All right, so let's continue knitting this. Color change in. And I'm through purling. No more pearls in this project. And I think this is gonna be a slightly slouchy which is fine. Santa's hat is a little slouchy. Maybe I'll make some uh, green mittens next year. I'll film it early enough so that um, you can make them. So I've never made mittens, so I want to make a pair. I don't know if I'm going to make them on the loom or crochet them. But I will learn how to make some mittens. Because like I said, I think this would be a cute Santa outfit. Matching it with some green mittens or a striped red and green mitten. But we'll see how that goes. So let's finish knitting this off. It's really not that hard. You can do this. You don't have to have any previous experience with knitting or crochet. You can learn this fairly easily. So I'm down to my last few pegs. Pull that green tight. I'm going to hold on to it while I knit it off. And then knit off. So, what I'm going to do, like I said, no more pearls. I'm doing, I thought I was, but I'm not. So, I cast on my red with a knit. So, I'm going to do two more rows of knit stitches. So, I'm going to go and do two more rows of the knit stitch. And then I'll be back to show you how we're going to close up and finish our hat. So stay tuned.